Hello, and welcome to Brian's Computer Retreat. In this episode, I'll be continuing my Pippin series for Marchintosh with a demonstration of how to make a CD-ROM designed to boot the Pippin. Pippin. If you'd like to follow along at home, you'll need a Macintosh running the classic macOS with a CD burner and a copy of Toast, or a computer capable of running Sheep Shaver with the utilities linked in the description, the starter disk images linked in the description, the Pippin Kickstart CD by Blitter also linked in the description, blank CDR media, a Pippin, some time, and lots of patience. In my next video, I'll go into more detail about how I made the base image I've provided, though I think these instructions will be more useful to most people who have access to a Pippin. First, you'll need to mount the base image on your Sheep Shaver machine or your old Mac. Once mounted, you can open the disk and you'll see several folders inside. The system folder is based on the Pippin SDK CD and includes a copy of the full finder as well as necessary extensions and QuickTime. Since many Pippins only have 6 megabytes of RAM, it is important to limit how many extensions you install. I have also installed at ease as an alternative to the finder, which uses less memory and gives you a more convenient interface for using the Pippin on a TV. Before attempting to prepare any game for the Pippin, it is best to find the game and get info on it first. Check the Memory tab to see how much the game requests. On a standard Japanese Pippin like my own, you'll have about 3 megabytes of RAM available to games once the system is loaded. To add a game to the CD you're building, first launch it on your development Mac so it can create any preference files it may need. Play through a bit of the game and get a feel for the control scheme, and look at the settings for the game. Some games, which would run fine on the Pippin, such as Tetris, use odd keys for control and provide no means of changing the control scheme. You can modify the Applejack config with the AJ Control applet in the Apple Menu Items folder of the base image, though I have not had luck with it. The trackball is mapped to mouse movement and by default both bumper buttons control the mouse button. The directional pad is mapped to the arrow keys, and the face buttons are mapped to Q, R, W, and E. The buttons on the bottom of the controller are mapped to quit, a key I couldn't determine, and double click. Once you've determined that the game can be controlled by the Applejack, it's time to copy it to the disk image. My preferred method is to store the games and their supporting files in a folder called Games. It is also important to copy the Preferences files from your System Folder Preferences folder into the Matching folder on the Disk Images System folder. Some CD games may also work. If you'd like to try this, Copy any data from the CD-ROM for the game into the disk image and set the disk image's name to exactly match that of the CD-ROM game you're hoping to configure. This worked for me with Journeyman, but it will be hit or miss. Once you have all of the games you want to play on your Pippin in the Games folder, it's time to make them available to at ease. To do this, Go through your games folder and make an alias to each application you'd like to have available to at ease. Then put these aliases in the at ease items folder on the disk images system folder. Once you have everything in here and named as you'd like, choose by name in the view menu bar to make your at ease items alphabetical. Next, I find it's best to rebuild the desktop on the disk image. If on a real Mac, you can just eject the disk image and open it up again while holding the command and option keys. For Sheep Shaver, it is best to reboot while holding the command and option keys. Allow the system to rebuild the desktop for each disk it asks for when it asks for permission. The final step before we create the bootable image of the disk is to configure at ease. Open the at ease setup control panel from the disk images system folder and select on to make the disk start up with at ease. 
You may want to choose Select Items to ensure that the games you want available are showing up in the list correctly. With all of this completed, you can now create the bootable disk. Open Toast and choose Macintosh Volume as the type of disk you'd like to create. Then, use the Select or Data button, depending on your version of Toast, to select the disk image as the source media. Make sure to check the bootable box so you don't end up with an extra coaster like I did. For a real Mac, you are ready to write the disk directly to a recordable CDR. If you're using SheepShaver, you'll want to select File, Save as Disk Image instead. Make sure to save the disk image to your Unix volume so you can access it from your host system. Once the disk image is saved, add .toast to the end of your file name so your host system recognizes it as a burnable disk image. Write the disk using your operating system's disk image burning mechanism. Pippin. Once you've written a copy of your disk image, it's time to test it on your Pippin. Be prepared for some things not to work. No matter how thoroughly you test your hard disk, there will likely be some games that simply do not work. For example, Myst will not run off of right protected media, like a recorded CDR, even though the game itself should run fine and doesn't have excessive memory requirements. Try to enjoy what you get working, and not to stress too much about games that didn't make it. The first game I'm showing off here is Alien Invaders. This is a Space Invaders clone made with icons from macOS and Windows, which I have always loved. It uses the mouse for movement and the mouse button to fire, so it works perfectly on the Pippin. Next up is Catacombs. This is clearly based on The Legend of Zelda, but seems a bit simpler in premise. For this game, I had to edit the controls to fit the Applejack's layout, which seems to have worked fairly well. Welcome, Elf. Next up is the Lemmings demo. The full version works perfectly, but I've installed this on the base CD I'm providing as a starting point for anyone who may want to give this a try. The game only uses the mouse for control, so it works just fine on the Pippin. The final game is Snood, one of my favorite games for the vintage Mac. It works perfectly on the Pippin, as again, it just uses the mouse for control. There's something very satisfying about using the Applejack trackball when playing Snood. Thanks for watching my video. If you like this one, please get subscribed. 
I'm still working on some more videos about the Pippin and ways to make it more useful today. Also, keep an eye out for more Marchintosh content from other vintage creators on all sorts of social media platforms. See y'all next time.